Hello again and welcome to another edition of Mechanical Pros here at Mechanical Resource Group. Today we're going to talk about something it's a little bit overlooked most of the time, but it's one of the most important things in electric motor application. Uh, today we're going to talk about connection methods. Now we've talked before about the types of connections, nine lead motors, six lead motors, 12 lead motors, and how to connect them, but we've never sat and talked about the method that we use. And what that means is the type of connector. Now what I've got with me today are acceptable methods. Now NFPA 79 clause 13, it tells us that it says that for electric motor connections, you can only use an acceptable method and twist on connections should not be used for this application. So in other words, guys, wire nuts are not an acceptable method of connecting an electric motor. Now, one of the biggest complaints that we get is motor manufacturers nowadays are making terminal boxes so small that to use Polaris slugs, of which we're going to review here in a minute, or split bolts, of which we're going to review here in a minute, um, they make them so small that you can't tape them up and you can't get them in the terminal box and make a good connection without pushing everything in there and making it really tight. So what we want to do is I want to show you the methods that we use, and I'm going to give you an option for what we're trying to get accomplished out in the field. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about what has been the standard for quite some time before the advent of uh, Polaris lugs, even before wire nuts in some applications in motor loads. They were called a split bolt. Okay, split bolts are exactly that. What it is, is you have a bolt that is U-shaped, but it's U-shaped, and then it has a nut that runs up and down. Now the way that you apply this is you go ahead and you open that up. I would take two pieces of bared wire, okay? So I have my lead coming in and my motor lead here. I would slide both of those underneath the split bolt, making a good top to bottom connection. And then I would take and I would tighten that down, okay? Now, everybody asks me, well, why is a split bolt connection so important or why is it important to have a good motor connection? Well, about 70% of troubleshooting problems generally come from inside the motor terminal box. So what we want to do is we have to understand, first of all, how current travels on an electric wire. And on a motor, it's an induction motor. And so what happens is the, the current carries on the outside of the wire. So the more connection we can get on the outside of the wires, making them close together on top of each other, and then giving a connection point that goes all around the outside of the wider, wire gives me the best connection that I can have. Now this was an acceptable practice for many years. Um, and then what you would do, and remember this is much bigger because I'm using a, a larger device so I can show you on the camera, but what it does is once we get the wire in there, now what you do is you take this, you would take rubber tape, which is, you know, just basically it's, it's, a, it's a tape that looks like a 33 tape, but it's adhesive on one side and it's rubber and stretchy and I would wrap it and make sure that I got a good ball around that. Then I would go ahead and I would wrap it with my black 33, Super 33, and then I would go ahead and put that around the outside of it. Now, remember what I said in the beginning of the video, we were talking about some of the biggest complaints and why people want to use wire nuts is because the terminal box are so small. Well, this doesn't defeat that problem, okay? But this is an acceptable method of connecting an electric motor, and it's, it's one way that we can do it. If you can do this, this is what we want to do. Now, not too long ago, what, is it, what happened is there was a company called Polaris, and Ideal makes them, but Polaris was the company that, uh, that started it. And what they did is they created this lug. And what it is is an insulated lug. Requires no rubber tape or black 33. And what it does is you would go ahead and you would put your wires, and I would have one wire that went in here, one wire that goes in here, and then if you'll notice, I have hex head connection screws on the top of it. I run that down, there's my mating of my two wires together, okay? This is an acceptable method per NFPA 79. Now, the problem with this, again, is going to be it's very large, and it's hard to get inside the motor terminal box, okay? So, 
but very good connector. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the old way. Now I, I've been in the motor business for quite some time, about 40 years. And so when I take a look at an electric motor, I take a look at, okay, I want to make sure that I get the best possible connection. So what we did in the beginning was we would use what we call ring terminals, and they're just motor lugs, okay? And it would go on the wire, and it would look something like that, okay? And it would be crimped down with a crimp connector, okay? And then I'd do that on both wires, okay? Now what I do is I mate these two up. I'm going to go ahead and take the wire out because it's easier for me to handle. Um, but I would take that and then take a standard machine screw, okay, run the machine screw through, put a nut. I don't use lock washers. Everybody asks me, why don't you use lock washers? Well, because it does create an air, air gap with a lock washer, and I want as much contact material to material as I can get because all of that wire, all that current is going to be passed through this connection, okay? So this is what it looks like here. Okay, so now if, if you notice how small that is, okay, compared to this, I'm getting pretty close, aren't I? So now what you would do with this type of connection is you would still go ahead and make this up. You would use your rubber tape, wrap it, make sure that you cover all your exposed metal, Take your black 33, wrap it around the outside of it, and so it would make something that would be no larger than this, okay? So there's not really an excuse to use a wire nut just simply because um, it's too big or it's smaller, okay? Most people use them because they're quicker, and it's a cheap and expensive way of doing it. But the problem is, is they don't last. And let me explain to you why. What happens when you twist wires together, and let's just go ahead and do it real quick, I'm going to go ahead and twist these two wires, okay? And if you'll notice as they're twisted, I kind of make connection, but I'm only making connection on 11% 11, 11 of the outside diameter of each wire. So now what I have to do is I have to rely on this, on the, on the wire nut. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to twist it, okay? That makes connection, right? Nice, clean connection. Everybody thinks it's okay, it's all right. But here's the problem, is they're not really rated in current. They're rated in size, wire size. So people will take a wire nut like this. This really should accept two number 12s. I've got two number 14s here. Now I'm going to squeeze this all the way down. I don't have a good connection underneath there. This connection is going to get hot. It's going to melt that because remember, Motor loads are unlike most other loads, like in your house or something like that, where the, the current's passing through at a fairly rapid rate. With an induction motor, if there's a variable frequency drive or a soft start or anything like that, the loads are going to change and the current is going to go up and down. You will even get into overload conditions sometimes, and you can run there at, for short periods of time. If you have this connector on there and it's not rated for the size wire that you have, these will get hot, they do melt, and they will fail, okay? So basically in closing, guys, what I want to just make sure that we all know is NFPA 79 was written for a reason, okay? And the reason it was written is because we saw classic failures such as what I'm talking about. Wire nuts are simple, they're easy, okay? And acceptable on most connections in fractional horsepower motors because fractional horsepower motors are going to draw fractional current. When you get up into that seven, ho seven and a half horsepower, 10 horsepower motor range, it is absolutely not an acceptable method. I don't care if you tape them on or whatever you do because they will spin off. And then all of a sudden you got an exposed wire, it goes to ground, it can damage the motor, it can damage the starting device. So what I just wanna make sure that we do today here on Mechanical Pros is we just have a general understanding of the best way to connect a motor to get the most life out of that motor to maintain its efficiency and eliminate downtime. So with the three that I showed you today, the split bolt, the Polaris lug, and the ring tongue terminal with machine screw, those three are acceptable methods for electric motor connection. This is not. So let's just keep in mind, guys, we want to keep our motors healthy. We want to keep our customers happy. We want to give our motors the best chance at living their life. And if we, get, we put them in a good position, 
we connect them con correctly, these motors will last much, much, much longer. So that's it for today for Mechanical Pros. Thanks for showing up. And we'll be back and we'll be talking about more interesting things. All right? Have a great day. <laughs>